the stratospheric rise to being the largest radio show in America. Mm. Doesn't happen overnight. It started when uh, when Festus Azili said, I want to give a shout out to Willard and Dibs. And um, the rest is history, Festus. Mm. Thank you, Festus. That's it. Can you hear me? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But apparently you can't hear us. Boy, we, that was a good setup, too. Flowery setup. We, we, were, we, were, we were going through thanking you for when you gave us an NBC Sports Bay Area shout-out. Yeah, i got to give a shout-out to Willard and Dick. Yeah, because we feel like we went from really good to great uh, as far as a, a, an American radio brand that day. You guys have been doing an astounding job. And I really appreciate it. So I have to give you a shout out on NBC Sports Bay Area. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to talk today. I know you guys have a lot to say. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. Well, Jeez. listen, our, our, it, always, always with the Golden State Warriors. Hey, let's just start with this and then we'll play some of the sound. We'll, we'll let this go all over the place. But real okay. quick, Festus, what's it like being a teammate with Draymond Green? Man, it's, I, Draymond is one of my favorite people in the world because he is loyal. He's someone who will always, uh, he's always going to have your back. And he holds everyone accountable, you know? So especially with everything that's been going on right now, it's really, it's really hard for me to, to hear the way people have spoken about Draymond because uh, it's hard for me to not be biased because I've seen him behind closed doors. I know what he is. I know what he stands for. And it's hard to judge somebody based on one uh, one wrong action. So now he's going to come back, and hopefully it's as soon as Friday against Chicago, and he's going to be different. And I've listened to about half the podcast so far, and I was telling Mark I've never heard him show this much contrition and apologize like this. Can Draymond still be the player that he needs to be if he's been a little bit declawed, I won't call it being declawed because he did say it on the on his podcast. He said that doesn't mean I'm not going to stir things up. I'm go- I'm going to do that. That's what he does best. He's still the heart and soul, and you can feel it when this Golden State Warriors team goes down on the floor without him. You can feel that they're missing that that heartbeat, that leader, that guy that you know comes out with a bite. So. Um, I, I'm excited to see him on the floor. You can still do all the things that he does, communicate overly, uh, be aggressive on the rebounds, and do uh, play defense um, without really going above the line. He's been the guy who tiptoed around the line, and he stepped over it. And I, I think it's one of those things where you can you can always come back. Well, I, I wonder if this particular statement – from his podcast is step one to doing that, right? You said he stepped over the line. Listen to what he said with regard to failing the organization. Joe Lacob made a commitment to me this past summer for the next four years. And the conversations that we've had and leading up to that, I fell miserably. And I apologize for that. The Golden State Warriors organization, I always say, like, that's my baby. Steph, Clay, Steve, Bob. We've been there from the beginning of what you know the Warriors as today. And um, I failed them miserably. What's your reaction to that comment, Pastus? You know the thing about basketball is it's so all-encompassing. Like, you don't get a chance to really reflect like you can. I thought it was really important for him to, to have this hard reset take time to, to really go back and reflect on what he means to the game of basketball, what he means to the NBA, what he means to the Golden State Warriors. And you can hear it in his voice. What I heard was someone with real remorse on and really feeling the, the, the effects of his actions. You, that whole podcast was him talking about the effects on his team, his teammates, especially Steph, when Stephen A. called, Steve, uh, called Steph out and said Steph is a bad leader based on these actions, we all know that's not true. Like You can try to find it in a way to pick at Steph, but you can't find anything. He's somebody who shows up every day as an incredible human, and Draymond is very cognizant of that. So he showed remorse, and I was very happy to hear that. And for, for the Golden State Warriors, I know they're really excited to have him back. All the teammates, everyone was excited. You could see it yesterday in the game. They were in the huddle together before the game, you know, talking. Right now, this team needs him. 
And to, to hear that he took some time to reflect, I'm sure everybody, everyone's really happy about that. Specifically, Festus, what has the team missed the most in terms of on the basketball court, the things that Draymond will bring that they've been so lacking? Draymond Green is known for being a, a do-it-all, a playmaker, a rebounder. He runs the floor and does all, all the things that a center can do. At the same time, playing the guard position, bringing the ball up, he revolutionized the position at the power forward spot because he can guard and switch off to the point guards all the way to the five men in the post. So there is so much that he does for this Warriors team. It's built around Steph Clay Draymond, and without him, they've really looked like a, a, a team without the heartbeat, which is what which is what he is for this team. Festus Azili joining us here on 95.7 The Game, Willard and Dibs. Festus, you hear when Draymond goes through the list of key warriors, he still mentions Bob Myers. And he spoke to Bob repeatedly at the start of this suspension process. Um, in your mind, what does that say? How, how much does Draymond miss Bob's presence? Now, I'll tell you guys this about any team. If you get to be around each other through a, an NBA season, you will get close, really, really close with your teammates, with your coaches, with your general manager. And this is not just one season. Bob Myers drafted Draymond and myself in 2012. So you, they've been through all the battles together. They've been through a losing season together just three seasons ago before going on to win a championship again after Kevin Durant left and they said the Warriors will never win again. They went through the first championship and their first struggles. And, and so this journey that they've been on, it, it doesn't just create friendships. It creates brotherhoods. This is all around. This is the reason why I'm here. I'm still a, it's still a brotherhood for me, and you can feel it every time I talk about this team because I know what it takes to win an NBA championship. People don't understand, I think, Sometimes what they're watching when they see a team win, it takes so much. It's more than mental fortitude. It's you're pushing beyond pain and you're doing it with all your brothers and you all come into an agreement of what it takes to win, to sacrifice, to go win a championship and to go win in this league and to do it continuously. It takes everyone to come together. So Bob Myers may be gone, but he still has his imprint because, like I said, that brotherhood and that bond stays forever. How much does Draymond's return both help and hurt Kaminga and TJD in terms of the leadership as a gain and the playing time maybe as a loss? How much does Draymond's return hurt TJD? Is that, was that your question? Hurt and help because it's going to cut into their minutes, but also it should provide some sort of mentorship, shouldn't it? Well, two things. One of them is right now Draymond Green's presence is really needed it's because Chris Paul just got injured. And that's another leader for this team and another blow to the team that, that really needs to find this stability out here in a very, in very rough water so that this season has been so far. So um, they're missing 30 minutes a game in Chris Paul. So there's a lot of minutes available. And Draymond coming back, in his absence, first off, in his Draymond's absence, you've been able to find a gem in, uh, in Trace Jackson Davis. Kevon Looney is Mr. Reliable. He's a guy who, as a part of that starting five with Draymond, he, he has been a part of uh, one of the, the best starting fives in the NBA. So I'm sure having a season like this without Draymond and with all the ups and downs, I'm sure he misses Draymond. They've had a lot of success together. So that's not a question. I'm excited to see what it's like for, for TJD to have Draymond in the lineup because there's a big guy who played with Draymond. I love playing with Draymond. I love the fact that, He's a guy who will always read you on the defensive end to know what your strengths and weaknesses is, to play off of them, and to fill in your, your fill in for your, bl your blind side. I love the fact that he's a guy that throws lobs to the bigs and re whenever the defense commits. So I'm excited for the new dimension of this Golden State Warriors to be unlocked when he comes back because during this season, two of the course of this season so far, they have not had a stable lineup that they can go to every game. So maybe when, with the with the return of Draymond, hopefully soon with the return of GP2 and Chris Paul, this team is, can start to find some stability. Festus, do you feel like a significant deal is, is coming? Who's on your do not trade list? Man, do not trade list. See, this is this is why you leave the the that 
job to the big guns and, and Mike Dunleavy Jr. Um, I do not trade list. It's really hard to say. Here's why. Because this season so far, they haven't played enough together for you to even know what they have as a team. It's been constantly trying to fill in holes that are left on the, on the squad. So um, I can't answer that question yet. I want to see this team play healthy together for at least 10 games for me to, for me to be able to make that decision. That's well dodged right there. It's, uh, it's I mean, you've become a veteran of uh, of the media. Welcome, uh, Festus. That was very well done. Now, assuming that I know you just can't wait. You can't wait to play something back tomorrow. So I'm just trying not to give you any ammo to use tomorrow that you're going to play back. It'd be like Festus said. Festus, how, how dare you think that we would take your comments and try to weaponize them we, against you? We don't do that stuff in sports radio. Not uh, here on 95.7 The Game. We're all family, Festus. I, I do want to ask you this, though. Mark's tough question, and I'll follow it up with my own just absolute nail-biter. Oh. If they make no move, Draymond comes back. Is this team good enough, Festus, to really make some noise? Did you see that game against the Denver Nuggets? Answering a question with a question. That's veteran. We did. If you saw that game, you realize that there, there are parts in that game when you felt like this Golden State Warriors is dangerous. This Golden State Warriors team is dangerous. And if they're healthy, if they can play sustained levels and be consistent, they could be really dangerous. So I will never put anything past this team. You never know. Two years ago, I was sitting here at the media seat saying, well, let's just get this team healthy and see what they can do in the playoffs. And they went on to win another championship. I was just talking with some of the guys from the Denver Nuggets before that game, and they said, man, we definitely don't want to see this team in the playoffs. So they know how to win. They're experienced. They're veterans when it comes to the playoffs. When they have this team together healthy and rolling like we know that they can play, they've shown that they can beat a lot of Giants. But so far this season, with all the inconsistencies, it's hard to tell. Justice, why can't Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Kaminga play together at the same time? So, because they're, it's redundant. What they do on the court, I really hope, to be honest, I really hope that they can figure out a way to play together. Because their athleticism, their size, the ability to defend, these are all things that can be really tough, a tough matchup. It's kind of like Michael Porter Jr. and Aaron Gordon for the Denver Nuggets. Two big guys that can switch out. They can cause problems on the on the offensive glass. But then, you know, they, they both do something different. I think when if they can play together, it would be one guy would be a shooter and the other guy would be a slasher and driver. And they have to figure out how to get that done, how to get the spacing together. I think that the spacing is really the biggest key. Are you at all baffled or bewildered by Andrew Wiggins and his inconsistency this year? Um, well, players go through shooting slumps, so you never know what's going on in a player's life or what, what's going on with them at all. You just, I know that I see him out there working on the defensive end. I see him, the reason why, you know, the one game where uh, everyone was talking, I think it was the Denver Nuggets game where J.K. never came back in, Andrew Wiggins was playing incredible defense on Jamal Murray. That fourth quarter, that was Aaron Gordon really going crazy. So Andrew Wiggins was in there, and Steve Kerr was torn. Because can I play Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Kaminga here at the end of the game while Andrew Wiggins is really defending Jamal Murray? So he's doing his job defensively. Offensively, as you know, it's an up-and-down league. Sometimes you make shots, sometimes you miss shots, and the confidence just comes from that. If you're struggling offensively, you continue to struggle until you have a good game and you build on that. So far, the season has been rough defensive, uh, offensively, but it's good to see that he's still out there helping the team uh, on the defensive end. Festus, uh, and, and maybe you have done this, but uh, what, what would you say to Jonathan Kaminga right now about his frustrations? I mean, everyone... I think everyone wants to wants to play in the NBA. There's nobody who's not frustrated unless you are on the team where you are the superstar. You, everyone wants to play. I'm sure that's the that's. I was a player. I had those concerns as well, and I understand from his perspective. Um, it's his fourth year. He wants to be out there on the court. My biggest thing about every year and every team is there is a sacrifice to be made to to win. And so far, what he is experiencing is that 
that part of the season where you have to sacrifice. There's going to be games where you play. There's going to be games where Andrew Wiggins, because that's another guy that, that does a lot of the same things that J.K. does, it just depends on how the game flows. you got to leave it in Steve Kerr's hands. You have a coach in there who is a nine-time champion. You know, so you got to give him some benefit of doubt. Let him be the guy that says the game. What you can do is you can control your controllables, control the things you can do. Your work ethic, what you do in the, when you get in the game, and make yourself indispensable where you can't, they can't play without me on the court. Get rebounds. Do all the things that a young guy is supposed to do that this Golden State Warriors team need. They need youth to be on the, on the floor. So, Keep doing all the things that you're doing, and I think that you'll find yourself in a position where the, the team can't take you on the floor. You, you mentioned Steve. Do you, do you think his voice is still resonating in the locker room the way it always has? His his voice is, is going to keep resonating as long as he's the coach of that team. He's the guy who has earned the right to to, to speak with the team and to, to get the, the confidence of the guys. It's just right now, everything is amplified because this team has gone through some losses. But I said this at the start of the year. This is going to be Steve Kerr's hardest job because this year is going to be Steve Kerr's hardest year because it is rare that you have a team that has a dynasty trying to incorporate young guys and new guys to prolong the dynasty for as long as it has gone. So it's going to take sacrifice from everybody on the team to right the ship, but it's possible. I just want the fans to recognize that what they're watching is unprecedented. There's not really anybody in the NBA who's trying to do what the Warriors are doing. And the fact that the, the ship is rocky, all it takes is a few games, a few games to go the right way for things to click and the Warriors to have the confidence that they, that they need to be back. It's just you've got to be patient as things come uh, and, and come together. Uh, great to have you, my friend, always, always. Thanks so much for doing it. I appreciate you guys, for sure. Okay, there it is. Festus Azili. Yeah. Draymond Green's one of his favorite people on the planet. Stay tuned for the next shout out uh, on the next game, which will be Friday at Chicago. Wednesday's a national game. I don't That's think right. that they're doing their thing. Wednesday at 5 30. 5 30, early start, early start, early start.